If you objectively look at the likely outcome of Ford and Tesla's strategies when it comes to electric car manufacturing over the next decade, there's a very good chance that these two manufacturers will replace General Motors and Toyota as the two largest car makers in the United States. In fact, there's not a very good chance. It is almost certainly inevitable that this will happen. On this channel, I've been saying for a long time now that I wish Ford would save themselves. I wish they would do what they should do and make some actual intelligent decisions. And they've made some. Isn't this great to see? Ford has revealed their strategy. And it's a strategy that actually makes a lot of sense. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for supporting the channel. I'm coming to you from Bangkok in Thailand, where Ford are actually pretty popular. The Ford Ranger, I've seen them everywhere here. Ford even make the Ranger here. Do they make an electric version of the Ranger? No, they do not. Do they plan on making one? Maybe. I don't know. But if they did, I imagine, considering their new strategy, it would probably come with CATL's lithium iron phosphate batteries, which would be a smart move. One that Tesla made years ago. But one for some strange reason that the entire automotive industry, the mainstream car industry that you know about today, hasn't decided to adopt. Ford, bizarrely, is one of the first, even though Tesla has been doing this for years. Now, Ford Motor Company in the coming months will offer two different battery chemistries in its electric vehicles. A lower cost version with a little bit less range and a more expensive version with a little bit more range. When it comes to Tesla's cars, the lower cost version with a little bit less range makes up nearly 70% of all sales worldwide. Ford's customers, Ford have said, many of whom are new to electric cars, won't be saddled with confusing purchase decisions over specific chemistries as the options will be woven into already established configurations based on battery range. I agree with Ford here. Battery range is really the main thing customers need to know. But if you're a customer who actually cares about getting a good product or the best product, well, come to the channel here and I'll explain to you the difference between Ford's chemistries. One of them is called lithium iron phosphate batteries and the other is NCM, NCMA, NCA. The easiest thing to call them is just what do what the Chinese do. Call them ternary batteries. So we've got LFP batteries, lithium ion phosphate, and ternary batteries. Now the reason I say ternary batteries are easier to call them that is because there's lots of different chemistries depending on the manufacturer, but ultimately they are all boiling down to being nickel-based chemistry batteries, whereas lithium ion phosphate batteries don't have any nickel and they don't have any cobalt. Now lithium ion phosphate batteries are a little bit heavier and a little bit less energy dense, meaning you get a little bit less range per battery cell but they last on average twice as long as nickel-based chemistry batteries. Today, all Ford EVs are equipped with batteries using a nickel cobalt manganese chemistry. In other words, ternary batteries, not LFP batteries. The only manufacturer of EVs in North America that uses LFP lithium ion phosphate batteries is Tesla. Starting this spring, Ford will offer the less expensive lithium ion phosphate chemistry on its Mustang Mach-E. The battery chemistry will come to the F-150 Lightning next year. Ford is basically identically copying Tesla's strategy. This is exactly what Tesla does with the Model Y. And it's genius. It's genius because, you know, most mainstream automakers use batteries from LG Chem or LG Energy Solutions. They're General Motors' main battery partner. And guess which battery manufacturer has had more recalls than every other battery company put together? It's LG Chem. Now, lithium ternary batteries, just by their nature, are more prone to defects than lithium ion phosphate batteries. What's Ford's biggest problem? Biggest, by a million miles. Ford's biggest problem is warranties. They spend more on warranties, recalls, all those sorts of issues than any other car company on the face of the earth. The other advantage of Ford in progressing down this strategy is that it gives them the option of having cheaper electric cars. If the battery pack is around 30% cheaper, and that makes up the main 
component of the car's cost, this is a big advantage for Ford. In addition to their low cost because of more readily available materials, meaning uh, no nickel needed, no cobalt needed, that's the big advantage of LFP as well. Lithium ion phosphate batteries are more durable and can be fully recharged more quickly, Ford have said, and that is true. That makes them better for customers who mainly use their vehicle for routine trips to work or school or fleet operators with fixed routes. In my opinion, lithium ion phosphate batteries are actually more suitable for about 95% of the car buying public, or at least will be within the next few years, especially when you consider the fact that CATL, Ford's new battery partner, the company that Ford will get the batteries from, will likely introduce their hybrid lithium ion phosphate and sodium batteries within the next 12 months. And those batteries have some significant advantages over any other battery chemistry in the world. I'll talk about those advantages in a new video soon to come. Now, it is technically true that nickel, cobalt, manganese batteries or ternary batteries, by contrast, offer longer range and are more energy dense than lithium iron phosphate batteries, making them technically better for customers who take long road trips or need to tow or haul. But the reality is that the gap between these two battery chemistries has closed over the last few years. In the past, there was a wide gap between the actual energy density of lithium ion phosphate batteries and ternary batteries, but that gap has begun to close. I mean, have a look at the Tesla Model Y and the Model 3. They get a similar range using similarly sized battery packs to other EVs from other brands using lithium ternary batteries. So you can see the gap has closed. Despite the addition of a new battery chemistry, Ford EV customers will simply continue to select between a standard range battery or an extended range battery. Charles Poon, Ford's Global Director of Electrified Systems Engineering, said EVs with standard range batteries will automatically get the lithium ion phosphate chemistry while extended range models will continue to use nickel, cobalt, manganese batteries. Still, Poon said the automaker plans to educate customers and dealers on the differences so they can make more informed purchase decisions. This is coming at a time when CATL is not running at full battery capacity. They're not. CATL is probably running at 60% capacity. It's very likely Ford has signed a deal with CATL to get lithium ion phosphate batteries at a price possibly 40% lower than Ford are currently paying for their NCM or ternary batteries that they currently use in their pickup trucks. Utilizing these battery cells in the Mustang mach -E and in Ford's electric pickup truck will give them a huge advantage. They'll be able to drastically reduce the price or simply start making a profit on these EVs, which, well, as you know, no legacy automakers currently make a profit on EVs. This will enable Ford potentially to get closer to doing that. We will continue to utilize multiple media channels, including Ford Pass, to provide suggestions to our customers so they can maximize the experience irrespective of chemistry, he said. Dealer training is a core component of bringing any new product to market for both sales and service staff, and we'll continue on that process. In late 2021, Tesla began offering lithium ion phosphate batteries on standard range models. Isn't it a strange coincidence? That was the first year Tesla actually made a profit. Hmm. Stellantis plans to offer them on EVs in Europe at some point in the future, while General Motors could add lithium ion phosphate batteries as it works to reduce EV costs as well. I should point out, a particular subscriber to the channel here has tried to convince me that General Motors will in fact use lithium ion phosphate. In fact, I'll be using an even better version of lithium ion phosphate batteries based on a patent. I'm sorry, there's no fact to that. We don't know if General Motors do plan to use lithium ion phosphate batteries or not, but hopefully they decide they should and go through with it. LFP has a number of major advantages over nickel rich chemistries. Sam Albersmed, Principal Analyst with Guidehouse Insights told Automotive News. Chief among them is cost. Lithium ion phosphate batteries are 30 to 40% cheaper than nickel, cobalt, manganese batteries because minerals such as iron and phosphorus are abundant throughout the world. Now that isn't actually true. Phosphorus is not abundant throughout the world. I think he's been misled. Phosphorus actually is mainly sourced from Morocco where it's a bit controversial, but Anyhow, it is true that there's plenty of phosphorus right now to go around, although the farming community might tell you otherwise. Now, 
This is especially appealing to Ford. What's appealing? Cheaper batteries. A 30 to 40% discount on the price of batteries is massive. Ford company executives have admitted what I've been saying now for a long time. Ford's EVs are not profitable and won't be until reaching their second generation at, in 2026. Ford has to reduce the price of not only the cells themselves, the battery cells here, but also of the packs and also of the structure of the cars themselves. It needs to do what Tesla is doing by reducing its manufacturing costs in every way possible. Ford slashed prices of the Mustang Mach-E after Tesla announced similar cuts, but it has raised the price of the Lightning pickup truck many times since the 2021 launch of the pickup. The base model is now 15,000 US dollars more expensive than its original price. One downside to lithium ion phosphate is that you can get slightly lower ranges. Because these batteries don't contain energy dense nickel, EVs equipped with them can't quite go as far. Although their faster charging times and longer life cycles make up for that in my opinion. And if you're able to do what Tesla does and reduce the weight of the vehicle in general, then you can offset the lower energy density of LFP batteries. Now Ford said, not every EV needs to have a 600 or 500 mile range. There's a lot of applications where having 150 to 200 miles of range is more than adequate. However, Poon from Ford declined to say if the addition of lithium ion phosphate batteries on standard range models will reduce the distance these EVs can travel on one charge, noting that the different chemistries can provide very similar numbers. But the reason, the primary reason Tesla is able to make up for the lower energy density of LFP batteries is by having lighter vehicles than all of their competitors, significantly lighter. That is an area that Ford will have to work on if they want to match Tesla's range achievements using LFP batteries. Ford said that lithium ion phosphate batteries could have a more efficient battery pack design than their nickel cobalt manganese counterparts, which could make up for some of the range deficit. The first lithium ion phosphate batteries for the Mustang Mach-E and the F-150 Lightning will be supplied by CATL in China. They'll be made in China and the CATL will ship them over to North America. Ford plans to build a 3.5 billion battery plant in Marshall, Michigan that will be dedicated to local production of LFP battery packs. But what this will mean is that the first vehicles equipped with lithium ion phosphate cells from CHL in China won't qualify for part of the EV incentive, probably around half of the incentive because of the batteries being manufactured outside of North America. Scheduled to open in 2026, Ford's new LFP plant in North America will operate as a wholly owned Ford subsidiary using technology from CATL. Basically, Ford will license the technology from CATL and it will employ 2,500 workers and have the capacity to build 35 gigawatt hours of lithium ion phosphate cells every year. That's enough for 400,000 electric cars. Ford's electric vehicle lineup has generated huge demand. That is true. To get as many Ford EVs to customers as possible, we're the first automaker to commit to build both NCM and LFP batteries in the United States, said Jim Farley. We're delivering on our commitments as we scale LFP and NCM batteries and thousands and soon millions of customers will begin to reap the benefits of Ford EVs with cutting edge, durable battery technologies that are growing more affordable over time. Jim Farley is on the money. And here the key point is growing more affordable with time. Now remember, the price of lithium has come down by about 40% this year. Ford has found a way, which Tesla has known all along, for how to reduce the cost of their batteries. But Ford is going all in on LFP batteries. By building this $3.5 billion plant, it means they are fully committed to LFP battery technology for their future EV lineup. And this, my friends, is essentially Ford's greatest chess move of the past decade. It's what will save them from what could have been a terrible future. Now, things are looking much brighter at the Blue Oval. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Thank you for watching.